welcome back to my channel as you can see i look a little bit cash today i wanted to make it chill and casual because i'm talking about something really serious but i don't want the video to be too deep at the same time so i decided to just come from a very very light-hearted note as you can tell from the title today i'm going to be talking about all things church is church important um is it necessary for us to go to church um can we grow without going to church why do we even go to church in the first place um these are my reasons for not going to church are they valid you know just all things church and i'm going to be sharing from my experience because this is one one topic that i'm really really passionate about i've been through quite a few things around this church topic yeah so i just wanted to share that and hopefully it helps someone if you're new here forgive my manners my name is Doreen. welcome to my channel and yeah join the fam subscribe and if you end up liking this video please give it a thumbs up okay so yeah let's get right into the video so i'm going to be starting first with my story and just know beforehand that i've seen shaggy when it comes to this church issue okay so you're not hearing this from someone who has had an easy walk with it all her life but yeah um so i grew up in rccg when i talk about these things on instagram and on twitter i don't name drop because i just feel like there's no need but this is my youtube farm okay so i'm gonna be real with y'all you know anyway i grew up in rccg if you're not nigerian even if you're not nigerian rccg is within christian church of god it's all over the world so everybody knows rccg is one of the foremost Pentecostal churches in Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken, and um, yeah, I grew up in RCC. So I, from like when I was two to like like when I was a teenager, teenager, so for a very long time, and I loved it. I talked about it so many times on this channel. I really liked growing up in church, but I also knew that a lot of my foundations were pretty faulty as regards knowledge, right? When I started uni, okay. I was in the main campus if you're studying medicine you're on the main campus for a year before you move to med school right and the main campus is not too far from my house so um i used to still go home every single weekend and i realized that it wasn't sustainable like that so some sundays i would need somewhere to go that wasn't you know church my church at home and um so i, I tried out rcf rcf is the regular fellowship for reading um people you know I don't know. And then I was just like, nah, I don't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. And I think the reason why I didn't like it as at that time was very vain. I was very used to my church at home was really big. If you know how like Pentecostal churches work, how there's headquarter here, headquarter there, area, this province, this, all those things. My church was like a headquarter. So my church was pretty big, alright? And as I was not looking and the idea of a student being my pastor did not just sit well with me. Do you, do you get so <laughs> I was like, nah, RCF is not for me. And then I went to chapel. Chapel, the, the, the school chapel. So I think every single uni has a general chapel where Christians can go to worship. And there's a, there's always a Catholic one and there's a Pentecostal one. I don't know if this is how it is in every school, but that's how it is in my school. And, you know, there's also a mosque, right? So the chapel that was not Catholic, so the Pentecostal one, I was like, okay, let me just try it out. Their services were 10 to 12. They were so easy. A lot of fellowships in school used to do services in the afternoon, which I was not a fan of, right? So I'm like, up to them, 10 to 12 is not bad. So I started going to the chapel in my school at the time. I think the name was, I can't remember the name, but it was Shad Chapel, that's what we used to call it. So I just used to go there. And because the chapel was open to everyone, so there were lecturers, there were students, there were, you know, it felt like my home church. They used to do Mother's Day pastor was not a student um they you know just had that my home church vibe so i enjoyed it right so i used to go there anytime i wasn't going home for the weekend and then i moved to med school and this was a little bit farther from my house going home every weekend was not going to cut it anymore at all like it wasn't even going to work and then um i tried out rcf for med school this time and i didn't like it in fact this one was even a lot smaller like i said my parameters at the time were very vain okay it wasn't anything deep but the day I went, I was just like, no, I'm not going to grow here. I just didn't go. That was what I thought to myself. And then my hostel at the time was close to this Covenant Christian Center um, branch. And I'm like, okay. My, um, my classmate was like, she was going to try out the church. And I'm like, okay, let me follow you. All right. I didn't have church. So I was following everybody to their church. <laughs> and so I followed her and Covenant Christian Center. At the time, they had like this Covenant Connect CC. 
yeah i went to the church and the first time i was like i love it here that was the first time i actually covenant is a very sound church right so that was the first time i really heard certain things teachings about the holy spirit um I heard people praying in tongues just openly like that. Um, worship would actually move you to tears. And the pastor there was really, 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 really sound. So I loved it, right? But at the same time, I did not commit, commit. Because anytime I, I wasn't around, I still go to my home church. I didn't join, like, I didn't do membership school. I didn't do join a workers first. I did not join any. I didn't participate. Like, I didn't get involved. I was just going every Sunday. So you will know that. If you see my face, you know that, oh, I know this girl, but I didn't make any new friends, guys, zero, zero, I didn't make any new friends, I didn't join anything, I don't even think they ever had my details, I was just like, here to fulfill righteousness, go to church and come back, right? And then, second year passed, and it was time for third year now, and I moved to a different hostel, which was now inside school, and I also needed a new church this time. It wasn't close to me anymore, right? So I needed another church once again, guys. Ha, ah, God, I, I just feel like in this church what I've seen she did. Third year, I went to Desta. But Desta, I did not stay too long there. After like three Sundays off and on, I stopped going. And then I was churchless again, okay? And at this time, anytime I wasn't home, I wouldn't go to church and i didn't i didn't like it because i still had that very religious mindset to church so if i didn't go to church i feel very very guilty so i'm like i need a church right and then my friend was like okay come and follow me to church if you don't like it then we'll see what goes what happens from there and i followed him to petra lecky at the time there was a bus in my school that used to convey students there and there were quite a couple of students already going to the church so mine was just to join them in this bus and go and then for the first for the second time i felt like wow i like this place the first sunday i was there i'm like i'm definitely coming back i felt so free i was used to people forming in church nobody was forming people with their makeup and their heels they would kneel they would worship they would pray they would the the word was so sound and it was a small church like we're not many it wasn't a big church or anything but there was this close knit it felt so it felt so good it felt so i felt like something shifted in me that day and i told my friend i'm definitely coming back and so i started going back right i started you know it took a while for me to like settle settle in and get familiar with the people but then i used to i was very faithful to it even though i, I also didn't take it as seriously so apart from sunday services i didn't used to tune into things online i wasn't following them on social media i wasn't i didn't commit Okay, and this was this is like the first mistake when it comes to these things. I didn't commit to anything. I just used to shop, go every Sunday and stuff like that. I don't think people even knew me like that apart from people in my school because I wasn't trying to blend in at all. And then lockdown happened and some things happened. And after a few months, Petra Lakey like dissolved and it didn't exist anymore. And I'm like, God, what's happening? I was actually very, very angry with God at this point because I'm like, I know church is your plan, right? So why is it that I just keep hopping from church to church and I can't find, I can't seem to find somewhere. Once I get settled in some, some place, something happens and I'm moved again and something happens and I'm moved again. I was tired, like God was happening, but then it was locked down and there was no need for church. So um, I used to watch sermons online and that's when I became a sermon junkie. I used to listen to sermons a lot, a lot of foreigners, not Nigerian pastors to be honest, I didn't listen to the foreign take my turn. I talked about them on this channel before, right? I didn't say a lot of sermons and everything. And but I knew deep down, because at this point I was taking my my relationship with God seriously, I knew that the church was a need. And then it was also around this period that I first got to hear about celebration church, which is the church I attend now. And there's like I'm going to leave a link to the thread I wrote. There's like a whole story behind like everything happening how i didn't want to go at first how i'd pray about it and god would tell me and i'm still not listening but yeah eventually i decided to make a decision which was like last year july and i started going to celebration church physically and i'm like i'm going to commit to this place like i'm going to stay here and that's what i did and i can tell you that my life has changed it's been one year my life has changed tremendously like tremendously i can't even tell you and I said all of that story just to paint a picture because I know that so many people have not had this thing easy. They go to one church, something will happen, they'll leave. They'll be churchless. They'll look for another one, something will happen, they'll leave. And it just seems like 
their church prostituting and it's not really their fault right because for me it wasn't even my fault apart from the mistakes i was making like not committing things were actually happening that were beyond my control and i just felt very tired at some point i'm like is <laughs> is it really bad for us to go to church you know so now let's quickly run through like some of the reasons that i feel like people don't go to church and we'll just address some of those reasons quickly and then we end the video right so the first reason or the first thing i've been seeing people say a lot is uh, I just want to know God for myself. I just feel like I want to know God for myself. I just want to God is between me and God, so I can just know God for myself and go from there. I feel like people are not being honest. I, as, as in, you can say anything you want to say, but at least be honest. If you read your Bible, you will know that there is nowhere in the Bible, in the New Testament, at the advent of the church, that the apostles ever said, Oh, this person got saved. Okay, now go forth and know God for yourself. Was that ever the case? It was never the case. And I'm going to read something so that we can like get the full picture. So, just consider it's a mini Bible study, okay? So, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, guys. See the Bible? My Bible is very big. <laughs> I don't want to use the second smaller one because it's good news. And I really want you to read this in NLT verses 41 to 47 i really quickly so the the backstory is that peter had peter and the other disciples had just received the holy ghost and the peter was preaching right and it says that those who believed what peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about three thousand in all first point added to the church all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship and in sharing in meals including the lord's supper and to prayer a deep sense of awe came over them all and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need they worshiped together at the temple every day met in homes for the lord's supper and shared meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And the, sorry. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. I want to point out a few things here. Number one, when you get saved, you are not born into a, an only child family. You are born into a big family. Okay? It's not an only child situation. It's not just you and God. I'm really sorry. I remember having a question with someone on Twitter and the person was like, Well, God treats me like an only child, so no. First off, they worshipped together in a building. They took fellowship seriously. When people got saved, they were added to the church. It was not when people got saved, Peter would tell them, okay, now these are the tools you need to go and prosper on your own. No, God's plan is the church. The church is God's plan. So I don't like you when people that know these things, because you can't study the Bible. So I saw this, someone said this on Twitter, that if you, if you are very serious about even knowing God for yourself, maybe you've experienced some things and you're like, you have questions and you want to go and learn about God by yourself, you want to study on your own, your study will lead you back to the body. That's exactly how she put it. And it's so true. Your study will lead you back to the body because that's the body of Christ. You can't study this Bible and your conclusion is that church is not important. I'm sorry, it's not possible. No, it's not. Even if you don't even do, you're not a deep reader, you don't have all the revelation and all the Greek words, you can't study. It's very clear. It's everywhere. I mean, in entire, almost the entire New Testament are letters to churches. Fam. I find it very funny when people come and say things like, Oh, I don't even have a pastor church I go to. I don't listen to Apostle Selman online. I'm sorry I miss Apostle Selman. But a lot of people just feel like once they listen to Apostle Selman online, um, they're good. Apostle Selman is a Nigerian preacher that's really sound, by the way. And your teacher is <laughs> really sound right and people will be like oh once i listen to him online i'm good you know just tune in has it ever hit you the apostle someone is teaching in the church i'm sorry no has it ever crossed your mind that these people you are listening to online are teaching in churches like they're actual people in that building listening to them do you realize do you, do you realize you're seeing it online oh yes cool but there are actual people in that church versus them if those apostles you're listening to and those pastors you're listening to do not think church was important do you think they might not just sit in their room set up do what i'm doing even their titles pastors apostles evangelists let me tell you what the bible says about them in ephesians 4 verse 11 let me quickly open that 
Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So all those apostles they are listening to, why do you think they even have that title? It's because there is a church that they, they need to equip. Is it making sense? I can't sit in my house here as I am and ordain myself pastor. I start teaching people that, oh, my name is Pastor Doreen. I don't go to church. I don't believe in church, but I am a pastor. You know, I just want to come and teach you guys God's word. No. They have those titles for a reason. You are listening to them teaching the church. So it should tell you that it's important. People are going there to worship with them. It isn't supposed to sell man. Koinonia holds in Abuja every evening. Do you realize? So don't think that, oh, all you need to do is just listen to this girl. You don't really have a church that you go to. It is important. There's this thing that we are fond of doing where we pick out the parts of the Bible that we want to do or the ones that are easy for us to do. For example, Pray, that's easy. Bible study, easy. Okay, even some people, sexual purity, easy. But when it's forgiveness, mm, mm. <laughs> so some people, when it comes to the sexual part, they're suddenly blind, you can't see anymore. Or when it's come, it comes to don't neglect the fellowship of the brethren, you finally start having personal opinions. You start saying things like, personally, I just feel like. So now you have a personal opinion. I thought everything, <laughs> that opinion just sounded funny, but like, I thought everything was meant to be based on God's word. Why do you suddenly have a personal opinion now? Why do you suddenly want something that you just personally chose to do? Another reason why people don't go to church is because they think that all churches are getting it wrong and somehow they are the only ones that know what true, um, true church or true fellowship and true believership looks like <laughs> i'm so sorry for the choice of my words but there's a mood i just think that ah, every church is no church is getting real church all these churches around they are just this that's pride let me tell you it's pride it's the pride that's making you so critical how can you think that you are the only one that knows what a good church should be that knows how it is meant to services are meant to go that knows what true fellowship is meant to look like that knows what true christianity is it can't be just you it just it reminds me of elijah when elijah was complaining to god that he's the only one he's the only one god oh, i'm the only one that is. and god reminded him he has thousands of prophets that have never bowed to bow you're not the only one you are not you're not no you i, see, I don't <laughs> god has people okay god has people so you can't just think that you're the only one that knows how church is meant to go every other church and that pride makes you very critical you go to this one they make noise too much they're always jumping up and down because another one people they're always dressing to oppress they're always dressing as if it's a fashion show you go to another one the choir is not this you go to another one you will find a force with every church because there's pride in your heart it's like you're going to church and waiting for them to please you. Please, sometimes it's even your own vain desires. Like, there's a way the church is meant to look. There's a way the pastor is meant to greet you. There's a way protocol members are meant to take you to your seats. Some, some people will complain that the pastor is too young. Go to another one, the pastor is too... It's even tribe sometimes. Like, guys, those cannot be your parameters. And it's that pride that's making you extra critical. You're criticizing every church. No church is good enough for you. No church is good enough for you. It's pride. And I'm not even here to condemn you or anything. I just want you to check yourself. Just check your heart. And let God deal with that thing. So that he can release you. Don't let the devil use that thing to control you. Don't let him. Another reason why people don't church. Sometimes it's pure laziness. You just don't want to go. And if it's that one, please get up. Get your, get your things together. Get your ish together. Another reason I know people don't go to church is, just like in my case, I already knew that I wanted to leave my home church because I just felt like there was more I could get in another church, right? There was more for me out there. There was more, there was more growth. I, don't, I just needed more, okay? So instead of not going at all, when you feel that detachment from your church, you feel like, I've been in church for two years, three years. I'm not growing. Nothing is changing. I'm not 
you know you see people that are in other churches how the things they can now do how how much they have grown in the faith and you feel like you're not growing in your own just change you don't have to now stop going to church if you have questions about god maybe growing up your parents forced you to go to church and now you have questions see all the questions you have about god can only be answered in him if you have questions about me like during like you are questioning some things like this during which school did she really go to are you sure she grew up in this place guess where you can get all the accurate answers from from me if you decide you're not going to talk to me anymore because you have questions your questions will still not be answered you'll still be confused do you understand so the only place you can get those answers instilled in god i can say prayerfully seek a, a good church guys church is important i can't tell you how much my life has changed how much progress i've experienced between last year july and now the kind of joy the kind of corrections the kind of growth i, I feel like if you've been following me for a long time you can tell there's been so much growth kind of understanding and knowledge that i have now like it's tremendous that's how i know for sure that this church is god's idea the accountability the people the warmth I can't even tell you how many times I'm having a bad day at school or a bad week, rather. And I'm just anticipating Sunday like, God, I need church. Like, I just want to go to church now. Sundays are my favorite days of the week. I love church so much. I love how I, I love how my spirit leaps for joy when I'm in the presence of my brothers and sisters. I can't even tell you how there are so many people that, if not for church, I probably would have looked at them and not like, be friends with them or anything. But because they're in my church, I'm like, oh my my, my, my bro my sis like you're my brother you're my sister like i'm sure you're a believer and everything you're in my church so like there's this love that is there and getting warm hearts and i just church is amazing if you're looking if you're looking for a church around you just look for a church where the word is taught in accuracy a spirit-led church a supernatural church because the church in the new testament was a holy spirit-led church okay look for a spirit-led church a church where the word is taught in accuracy right and a church that is devoted and committed to your progress and joy in the faith because that's really what it is about you need to grow you need to measure like i've been in church for how long what has changed how have i grown i was here before where i am where am I? I was here before where am i now okay so you need to assess all those things and i really pray that this video was helpful to someone out there prayerfully seek a church pray about it just because um I'm going to celebration church it doesn't mean you have to go to celebration church okay pray about it if god is leading you there by all means if god is leading to another one by all means too because i know that my church is not the only good church in nigeria or in the world okay so wherever god is leading you to listen and go because some people say i'm praying about it this is what i did too anytime my friends asked me <laughs> when i know you found a church i say i'm praying about it i'm praying about it as if it's is it see church is god's idea so it's not a prayer that God will not say, mm, I'll take one year before I answer you. No. He, he will lead you. If you add, he, as, well, as long as you're listening, he will lead you. And that's what he did for me. He led me to write to church. I wasn't listening initially because I didn't want to go to my church. Believe it or not, I really want to go there because I thought it was too popular. But God kept giving me so many signs and reasons why I should go. And I'm like, okay, yes, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to stay committed. I'm going to get involved. I'm going to know about this church. I'm going to, if you see me and stop me and ask me about my church, I should be able to tell you something. You know, join the workforce. Become active. Be participate. Like, put yourself into it and watch your life change, right? So, I really hope that this video was helpful. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Oh, wait. Subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.